We're going to talk about the start of the season, more specifically the first six weeks, and I'm going to give you some examples of some of the things that we do during that time. When you're starting the season, there's some things to, to keep in mind. Number one, most probably the most important, is make practice. Uh, it's been my experience that if you don't make practice, your chances of being successful decrease over the course of the season. Uh, it just catches up with you. Um, number two, starting with the season, make sure that 70 to 80 percent of your heart rate when you are when you are training is below 180 and for the most of it it's going to be around the 150 range and remember we've we have already talked about that and the workloads and the heart rates and we're trying to shift that curve over be aware of going too hard all the time if you go too hard you could just break down and it gets to the point where you're not even able to go 150 heart rates 140 heart rates uh, because you've just gone too hard uh, the flip side of that is be aware of going too easy. If you're just loafing all the time, you're not going to get anything out of that easy either. Um, and number five is what you want to do is you want to learn to swim fast but still cruise. Now the goal, the long-term goal of all this, and the key is being fast at lower effort levels, easy speed, 150, 160 heart rate, and then being able to and having the, the ability to be fast at critical parts of the race. So that's kind of like keep in mind as we're starting the season. Uh, during the first week, six weeks, we typically will spend a lot of time just on general conditioning. And it uh, depends on what sort of effort level, um, not effort level, but conditioning level the swimmers are coming, at, coming in at. Um, Fartlek training is still the best, and uh, it's been about 60 years, and it's still yet to be disproved that as you are beginning to get in shape, the general conditioning phase, that easy fast uh, is still the best and elicits the greatest physiological response. The, the term that I use is you want to push up from the bottom and you want to lift up from the top. You push up from the bottom by, by using those training speeds, 150, 160 heart rate, where you're pushing up, trying to get your, your threshold levels higher to elicit the physiological responses. And then when it's time, you want to lift up from the top by really going to maximum efforts, high speed, high workloads, and just kind of lifting, lifting up from the top. As you start out during the first six weeks, it's better uh, that you do too little than too much uh, to start with. It's very easy to hurt yourself to push yourself too much before you're really in shape and you, can, and you can handle those things. During this time, we let our swimmers choose their higher speeds. And I'll explain a little bit more when we get to the examples of what that means. But it basically means that when they're ready and they want to like pop in some maximum effort stuff or some really fast swimming, they're allowed to do it. But then they also have the choice to, uh, as they get into some recovery mode, and then get back into cruise levels. Um, during this time, there's physical changes that are going on. They're starting to get in shape. But it's also a learned skill. You have to learn how to do certain things just as you do every, anything else. So <clears throat> we set some guidelines for, for the start of the season. We're talking about the first six weeks, general conditioning. Uh, so what, is, what does that mean? What are, what are some things that we're, we're going to try to do during this time? Keeping in mind that you know fartlek swimming is still the best. Uh, one example: Let's say you start out, you go a 200 cruise, and you are at 150 heart rate, followed by a 200 easy with a pick fast. Now, all that means is that somewhere in that 200, they have to pick something where they are going really hard, really fast. Now, that doesn't mean they let their strokes fall apart. Um, but they just have to really gear it up and don't be afraid to go hard. Uh, and they get five to 10 seconds rest at the 200 and particularly during uh, the time after the cruise 200, that's when they're gonna be checking the heart rate. So they get five to 10 seconds rest. You can check your heart rate in six seconds uh, and then they can get into the next phase, the, the other 200. Um, some goals here is you wanna to try to be faster on the 200s uh, over time. And one way that you, you can do that particularly early is having better turns, better streamlines off the walls, 
maybe some better dolphin kicks. So you can still be at 150 heart rate, but then all of a sudden you may find that you're going from 215 pace to 24, uh, 214 pace to 212 pace, uh, and you can get faster at 140 heart rate. Maybe not be all in all that better shape, but just you're concentrating and you're learning how to, to swim faster. Another way is um, that we use is, is we just go a flat 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of fartlek where we ask them to maybe go two to 300 of easy recovery, followed by a 50 to 100, 75, even 25, where they cruise uh, at, at speed, where they build up to cruise speed, and then at some point they throw in maybe 15, 20, 25, 35 yards of max effort. Uh, and then they swing back into to two or 300 easy recovery. Um, and this is part of what we talk about, letting the swimmers choose their, their higher speeds. <clears throat> some, some kids that are in better shape or uh, as, as they get into the fifth or sixth week, they find that they can, they can recover easy. And it might only take 100 to 200 to recover. They may uh, be able to build to cruise speed, be able to hold that for 100, and then maybe throw in a 200 at a max effort. Um, you know, and as they get in better shape and they learn how to do it, they can, they can uh, extend the max speed, recover faster, and then uh, build to cruise speeds, um, and then hold that 150 heart rate. So you could extend that out um, if you want. You could play with the distances, uh, but it gives a swimmer an opportunity. One day he might be feeling good. He can, he can go a little bit harder. Uh, somebody... Uh, may not be as recovered from the day before. They may need more easy recovery swimming. It also gives the, uh, the sprinters who like to do a lot of this and maybe not so much of this and then like really try to blast this. It gives the sprinters an opportunity to do what they like to do uh, with longer easy recovery swimming which is probably what they would need versus a distance swimmer who might recover very fast be able to go maybe a 200 at cruise speed and then, um, and then jack it up for their, for their uh, higher fast swimming. Another type of, uh, of rotation that you might do, you might go a 75 cruise, take 10 seconds rest, 25 shooter, which is just a, a fast streamlined dolphin kick underwater where you're trying to get a little breath control work in. Uh, they come right up and they go right into a fast 25 of stroke. And this allows your stroke people to do that stroke, any stroke they want, or your IMers to change the stroke, followed by 100 easy, and then you can pick the number of rounds that, that you want to do. You may want to start out with two rounds, and then over time increase those to, you know, however many you feel your group can handle. Um, another, another way is if you uh, like going longer things, which I, I particularly like to do, um, We've moved away from going just 10 300s, although I think I feel that there's a, a, a value to doing that type of set. But in this case, it's kind of broken up a little bit where you go three 300s, where you just cruise and you're being aware. You're being aware of rotating the shoulders and hips. You're being aware of your breathing pattern. You're being aware of your dolphin kicks off the wall. Uh, just trying to be as efficient in the water as you can. So I just call that, you know, three three hundreds cruise awareness, and different people can hold different different send offs. You might then go three three hundreds where you get five to ten seconds rest at the hundred, um, and try to be that right at that 150, 160 heart rate. Then you go another three three hundreds, maybe five seconds at the fifty, uh, followed by one last three hundred where you're going <clears throat> getting five seconds at the twenty five. Now, because of the increased rest, and you're still trying to hold 150, 160 heart rate, uh, you're going to find that these are different speeds, and you're getting more rest during the during the during the uh, the, the 300. So you're still 150, 160 heart rate, but you're kind of changing speeds a little bit, and you're you're kind of learning some things. So some things to keep in mind: you allow during this time, we allow the swimmer to pick when they're ready to go fast. And that will vary depending on what their conditioning level and the events that they swim and the distances they swim. 